No time for introduction. Let's go ahead and get into it. Today, we're going to talk about Lisa Jo Chamberlain. Now, this case actually was so famous that for me, it's hard to find information on it. And if you do research on this type of stuff, you know what I'm talking about. But anyways, let's get to it. Now, some sources say that Lisa Jo Franklin and her boyfriend, Robert Gillette, had robbed some store out of state. And so they went into hiding by going to Hattiesburg, Mississippi to stay with Roger's cousin. The cousin that they stayed with, his name was Vernon. I'm assuming they probably called him Vern. Vernon was married, so he and his wife had invited them into their home. I'm not sure if they knew why they were actually there, but whatever. They're there. And it was at this time that Droopy Face and Numb Nuts actually saw that they had a safe inside of their house. And so the both of them decided to hold his cousin at gunpoint. You know, basically, give me the loot. Now, most people probably would have gave the man the money. You know, if he got him at gunpoint, it is what it is. But for whatever reason... Vernon stood his ground. He was like, no, I'm not giving you the money. I'm not giving you the code to the safe. It just ain't going to happen. And so Saggy Tits actually said, you know what? Let's just kill him. So that's what they did. So according to reports, they beat him up. They roughed him up. They did all type of crazy stuff to her. And to the wife, they actually beat her up as well. And they choked her out. And then after they assumed that everybody was dead, they decided, you know what? <laughs> We're tired. We need a break. Let's go to the town and run some errands or something. And so they took their sweet time. And when they came back, they saw that the wife was actually still alive. So they got a plastic bag. They put it over her head. And then they really made sure that they had done the job. And some sources say that after her soul left her body, these two decided to do stuff with the body. I don't know how true that is, but that's what I read. And I guess they was feeling like Escobar because at that point they chopped them up and put them in a freezer like drug money. So they took that freezer, put it in the back of Vernon's truck because, he, I mean, he's gone at this point. Why not just rob him? And they drove to Roger's family farm. I don't remember if the farm was in Kansas or Kentucky, but it was something with a case. And when they got to the family farm, then they started making illegal substances that starts with an M. The stuff you really don't want to mess with. And Gillette's auntie found out about this. And so she called the police. She was like, yo, get these crackheads off my property. Now, the police bust in like the FBI. And that's when they saw the the meth lab. That's when they saw all type of crap inside there. And that's when they saw the truck with the Mississippi license plates. They saw this freezer. They go into the freezer. And that's where they found the body. Somehow, Roger didn't get that. I don't know how he escaped that. But she couldn't get away from her. So to this day, she's in the Mississippi Department of Corrections on death row. Crazy, right? No time for an introduction. Let's go ahead and get into it. Today, we're going to be talking about the original fat bastard, Joe Metheny. Now, Joe was born in Essex, Maryland, and he claimed that he was neglected as a child. He also claimed that while he was a child that his mom had given him up to different families because she didn't want to take care of him. He also claimed that at some point his mom had died. Now either he was a liar or they used one hell of a Ouija board because his mom actually came out and said none of that was true. Although they were on the poor side, she said that she took care of all of her kids. They were not neglected. She worked a lot, but she did the best she could as a parent. I don't know about you, but I smell a liar, Joe. Later on in life, Joe actually met this woman and they ended up having a kid together. I'm not sure if they were abusive towards the child, but they were both known drug heads. Ironically enough, Joe Metheny used to hit the meth really hard. And the heroin. And the crack. Although he may not have been abusive towards his kid, he was a little abusive towards his partner. His old lady, as he comes to call her. And one day when he came home from work, he walked into the house and noticed that everything was gone, including his old lady and their son. Now, Joe flipped out and he did a little research and heard through the grapevine that his wife had hooked up with some guy and she was living on the other side of town. Now, he also heard that she was selling <coughs> for money and he did not like that. Now, he had heard that she was also getting high with some homeless people under a bridge. So he went to that bridge and he did not find her, but he did find two homeless people. And he asked them, where is my wife? Now, they didn't know what this man was talking about, but he didn't believe him, so he did the next reasonable thing. He chopped them up. He completely dismembered both of the men and he just threw them on the mattress. So then he lured a prostitute down to the bridge. He let her do some of his drugs, and then he asked her, where's my wife? And she didn't know neither. Then he abused her, beat her, killed her, and then threw her in the bushes. There's three people in like two hours. 
Then he lures another lady of the night down there and does the same thing to her. Now, while he was putting her in the bushes, he saw this black dude and he was like, another one. So he beat him with a pipe, ended him, and then he put them inside the river. That's five people in seven hours. And he gets away with it. No repercussions. Just walks away free. So after he gets away free on that, he actually lures two more women to his trailer. And unfortunately, he does what he does and chops them up. And this time he put them in Tupperware. Now, Joe's thinking, what am I going to do with all of this meat? Now, he's an entrepreneur, so he opens up a barbecue pit on the side of the road. I didn't mean to laugh, but y'all, he started selling them inside the pulled pork sandwiches. And when he ran out of meat, he actually got this other girl and he tried to kill her. But thank God she got away. And I don't even think he got charged for the two women inside the pulled pork sandwiches because the people ate the evidence. Now, he was unalive, but his last regret was that he did not get to kill his ex-wife and her new man. Crazy, right? No time for introduction. Let's go ahead and get into it. Today, we're going to be talking about Robert Rimmer. May the 2nd, 1998, you had two employees, Bradley and Aaron. They worked at the store called Audio Logic in Hollywood, Florida. Now, at first, it started off as a regular night. That was until two men entered the scene. The two men was Kevin Parker and Robert Rimmer. Now, Robert had a gun, so Aaron and Bradley got on the floor. There were three customers inside the store. The first one was Joe. Now, Joe was actually leaving the store, but he actually got, Robert got a gun. Said, uh -uh, uh 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 come back up in here. The second one was Lewis. Now, Lewis was outside having a cigarette, and he walked outside of Lewis and said, get up in there. I mean, dude was just minding his business. The third one was Kimberly. Now, Kimberly was actually sitting there. She had a two-year-old child with her. So she was just chilling in the waiting room. Robert walked up to Kimberly and was like, hey, your boyfriend over there waiting for you. Now, she was confused, but she went to the back and she saw four men on the back laying on the ground with their hands duct taped behind their backs. So she knew, yeah, this is it. Now, the two men started robbing everybody. So they took their wallets. They took their car keys, a cell phone. I mean, I know this sounds crazy, but honestly, I didn't. A cell phone in 1998? It must have been one of those big block phones. Anyway, they took it. Now, the two men also started robbing the audio store for all their, like, equipment and things that they had inside the store, like speakers and stereo systems and whatever they could get their hands on. They loaded everything into their Ford Probe and a Kia Cephia. Now, after the men robbed the store, they took everything, they put it inside their cars, and they began to drive away. But for whatever reason, Robert stopped. He came back into the store and he went up to Aaron, one of the employees of the store. He walked up to Aaron and was like, you know me, right? Now, Aaron is still on the ground with his hand duct tape behind his back, but he's like, uh-uh, I don't know you. I don't know you at all. But then Robert doesn't believe him, so he's like, you do remember me. And he killed him. He just shot him in the back of the head, blew his brains out. Now, when the gun went off, Bradley, the other employee, he jumped up because he's like, what? And Trigger Happy Robert said... So he killed both of the employees. And then after he killed the employees, he let the other ones go. He literally told them as they were leaving, Have a nice day. <laughs> now the police quickly find out who he was. And on May the 10th, just about a week later, they actually found him. Now my boy Robert, he wasn't going. He actually led the police on a high speed chase for like 12 minutes. Now 12 minutes running from the police is a long time. But being the king of stupid people, he actually led the police to his own house. The man literally pulled up to his own driveway. I don't know what the man was expecting to do with it, but but he did that. He did that. They don't have to look for you if you show them where you live already. <laughs> anyway, they found all the stolen equipment, and to this day, he's in Florida Department of Corrections on death row. <laughs> Crazy, right? <laughs> 